Greetings, Traveler, and welcome back to the Lapis Kingdom. I'm the Blue Regent, and I have some big, big plans for this beehive behind me. But first, I have a little bit of a project that I want to work on. So if you're ready, saddle up, and let's begin. So if you recall, we had a poll a couple episodes ago, talking about what kind of detail to add at this kind of, like, transition to the next floor up in the barracks. And the winner of that was G. And as you can see, I've, I've broken down all the other options. And G was this one here. It's the polished andesite with stone stairs. And so I started working on the pattern here, and it's, it's a little funky. It, um, it's a little weird. But I kind of, I, I like how it looks. It, um, it kind of implies that maybe you needed, like, one extra timber in the closer you got to the middle for, like, structural reasons. Like, maybe the outside, obviously, is going to be pretty sturdy because you have... Like this these two are really close to each other and so the closer you get to the middle maybe you needed timbers for support close together again so you kind of get like a two smooth andesite one stair two smooth andesite one stair two blocks one stair one block one stair and then it starts back over two one two one two so it just kind of has like a little bit of variation into it which is cool and then the towers, it's basically just the middle space on each flat side is where the stair goes there. I'm going to keep working this around, and we're just going to take a look at more or less how it looks when I'm done. So that definitely adds a cool detail layer. So now I think I'm just going to bring the whole thing up one more level, and then possibly the towers a third level. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I think the main body is going to be a two-story building. And then the towers are going to be either three to four. And those might just kind of come as we're working on it. So I've added the second layer to the whole fort slash barracks. And I'm now trying to figure out if it's too tall. And I, I'm not quite sure. I think I'm going to add a third layer to the towers and kind of just make a decision from there. And if I need to bring down the second part in the body of it, that's fine. So something I'm definitely experiencing with this is it being at the top of the hill that it's at kind of throws off my perspective of how tall it should be. Because it sits so high, a normal Minecraft height building feels, feels small. It feels short. And so... It kind of has an impact on my decision making on how tall I want everything to be. But that being said, you know, a thing that I talked about a long time ago when I built the very first house is my goal is to build everything a little bit bigger than I would normally want to build stuff because I, I kind of want everything to feel like these are places that things actually happen in. Like this is actually a fortress. That's you know, a house is actually a place that people live. And so maybe they're going to have to be a little bit bigger than you would normally build them simply because they need to be um, to fit everything. And so, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going for like a one-to-one -one scale as far as how big houses should be, but I am finding that even something that's that feels big when I'm building it ends up not actually being as big as it felt like. The mage tower is big. That's a tall building. But you go in the mage tower and there isn't a ton of space in there. And you know, that's that's mostly fine because this is a single player world. It really exists only to hold all of my potion making stuff. But at the same time, it makes it hard to decorate. And that's kind of the thing in Minecraft is, you know, how do I work with... Oh, this is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to build scaffold towers for all of the towers. How do I decorate the interior of a building using basic blocks? And so, you know, that's, that's definitely, as a builder, you know, kind of my job to figure that out. But a lot of the old school space saving tips to decorate interiors have kind of become, at least in my opinion, the default way to decorate interiors of buildings. And it does look cool, it does look nice, but at the same time, you know, it would be nice to be able to like build a house and go into it and have it look like 
oh, this is a furnished house, not a furnished Minecraft house, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Does what I'm saying make sense right now? And, and so it's tricky. Like, how much do I just rely on classic Minecraft-style architecture, and how much do I try to make things feel a little bit more realistic? And I think that as I build and as I find that how I want things... Oh, we have some visitors. Just gonna prepare myself to do something about them as soon as I finish this tower. There we go. So I think, you know, just as I build stuff and kind of figure everything out and how things should be sized in relation to each other, you know, that's going to have an ultimate impact on how big everything should be. So it's, you know, it's an evolving process, but I am finding that I'm definitely wanting to stick with my original idea, which is make everything a little bit bigger than I normally would. But I am definitely finding that that means that I actually need to make stuff even bigger than I originally thought. So the towers are now three high. And I'm not 100% sure which direction I want to go with height. I feel like the towers aren't quite tall enough for the rest of the body. But I feel like if I put caps on them that might change that. And so I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to leave them. Leave the whole thing and work on some more stuff around the village and just kind of see how I feel about the overall height of the entire building. So while I'm kind of letting this simmer in the background, a thing that I'm gonna start working on now is essentially increasing the production rate of these three farms, mostly to increase both breeding and trading. So a thing that I'm gonna start working on is collecting what we need to get beehives going. So I'm going to throw this campfire under this bee's nest, and hopefully that's close enough to... Yes! Okay, cool. So, I've got three honeycomb, and let's get a beehive going. Okay, so we'll get our beehive going, and then I want to figure out how do I want to do this. So essentially my goal is to start setting up beehives in my crop fields, and... Now a thing that I did when I set this up was I hid almost all of my water sources. However, not all of them are hidden. And so I think I want to do kind of like a, kind of like this sort of thing. The problem is, is I now, this looks kind of dumb. And I could do this. Oh, you know what I should do. This one definitely should go. Maybe that's just going to be what happens. Maybe just in the handful of places that there are beehives. This just might be the sacrifice. This is the sacrifice I make for essentially overall more productive farms. Let's see if I can do a little bee breeding and get some of the new bees to head over to the beehive over there. Okay, so I want you and you to make a baby. Neat, okay. And I want any amount of you to follow me over here. And there you go, yeah. Great. Yeah, this is your home now. And you can just fly around and pollinate all of this stuff. Oops. Well, I'll fix that later. I should probably get some flowers going around the farms. So let me grab some bone meal. This should have some bone meal in it. I don't think I've collected any. Ha! Yes. Actually, I'm just gonna grab all this because I feel like the tree generator is low. Last time I was there. I don't remember. I haven't built with wood 
a ton in a while, so I feel like maybe... Probably I'm low. Basically, well, all I'm doing right now is just bone mealing the grass to get plants to grow. Specifically to get some flowers to pop up around the farm. And then the bees will go to the flowers, and they'll come back, and that will, in theory, speed up the growth rate of the farms. Well, there goes our little baby bee way over there. Uh, okay. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why you're all the way over there. Is this enough flowers around the farms? I don't know. But it is more flowers around the farms than there were before. So that's cool. Um, where did you go? You were over here. Let's let's try to draw you back. Little little baby bee. Hello? Oh, there you are. Hello. Yeah, come back. Come back home. Remember your home's over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back this way. There we go. Okay. Now hopefully you won't forget that that's where you live. Hopefully the hives in here too, once we get those going, will increase the light around here and also cut down on mob spawns. That's the extra bonus that I'm hoping will happen from this. So I'm gonna keep working on that and fix a lot of our broken plots. And I think I'm going to improve just overall how this whole area looks because this is um this is a this is a pretty neglected spot of this village but it's getting more traffic lately because of all the crush farms so so farms today today might be your day the tree generator was not short on bone meal however that's a big jump so that's cool um I should bring all those hoes I bought from that villager over here. That'll happen. That'll happen off camera. Doesn't that doesn't all need to happen on camera? I don't think. Uh, let's. How do I? How do I get off you? Wow, I literally never use this thing. Okay, there we go. All right, all right. Let's see if we can get a second baby bee before we. Hey, hey, other bee. Yeah, come over here. Um, let's get a second baby bee for our farm. All three of you don't need to follow me. Nope, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just want, I just want the little one. Yes, 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 yes. Please, thank you. Just the little one. You both don't need to come. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. Cool, cool. All right. Yeah, you're coming over here. And this is your new home. Okay. Time to time to get to work on some some renovations to the farms. So I spent some time off screen working on the walls around the farm plots, and I added gates at all the entrances. And as you can see, I have beehives going in all of the spots now. So it's taken a little bit of time. However, We've made a lot of progress. The bees really speed everything up a ton. It's uh, it's it's crazy. I have to go back and fix the potato field still, as far as retilling a lot of this. However, this is um, this is big. I I I've never really played too much with getting bees going. Let me see. Let's let's change some stuff around here real quick. I've never really played around with bees too much as far as using them in farms. Um, I don't ever need my farms to produce that much that fast. However, considering that I'm ultimately going to need lots of decorative farms, and also I'm trading a lot more than I normally do when I play this, as fast as production as I can get on my farms is kind of key. And so... The, this this change, this improvement, um, is, is wild. And so anyone, obviously everyone who started taking advantage of bees once the bee update, you know, popped up, 
is probably like, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's how those work. But um, you know, a thing I don't really talk about very often is I I took a big break from Minecraft from for a long time, and when the B update happened. I wasn't playing. In fact, I actually really didn't come back until another update happened. And so, a lot of things that you can do in Minecraft are, are kind of new to me. Either because I, I took a huge break from it, or just because of, you know, like we've talked about before, the, the way that I play the game. And, and this, uh, getting this B operation going here is, is kind of slow. It's This is taking a little bit of time to get all of these beehive set up however what a huge change now obviously I don't have enough bees oh. now I don't have enough bees yet to accommodate all of the beehives that I have however you know that'll that'll change over time and once again not only does this help with food production and trade good production but it also increases block production because now I'm gonna have access to the honeycomb block which I don't really have a plan for yet but I don't really need one you know now I have you know there there are ways to automate that for sure and I, I haven't I haven't gotten that far. I'm not there yet. But now when I come up here and harvest all of this stuff, I can harvest honeycombs as well, and that'll give me access to ultimately those blocks. Now it is worth noting that I threw a trap door on the top of all of the beehives, and that was simply because there's a lot of campfires in this area, and I didn't like the volume of smoke that was coming up from this particular area. Um, so I tried to cap off how much of that was getting up into the air as best I could. Obviously, every once in a while, a puff still gets up, but it's just not quite as, you know, it's not as, like, hazy looking as it was a little earlier. You know, it's kind of an aesthetic thing. Um, it's not necessarily important, except I just, I like the look of it better without having all of these throwing, constantly throwing smoke up into the air. Again, uh, you know, I'm going to, now I'm starting to talk about the pros of having done all of this. Another pro of all of these additions is my bone meal production is about to skyrocket. And that's because my wheat grows faster now, which means that I have even more seeds to throw into the bone meal generator. So all in all, this is just a, this is just a huge leap forward as far as block production, food production, trading, um, just, just everything. I'm going to have to get more bees going in here because I don't have enough bees to support the amount of hives I have. Um, so that's going to be a lot of work. Is it ultimately going to be too many bees? Probably. You know, I definitely need to get a lot more flowers going around the farms. But yeah, I, I, I feel, I feel, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about all of this. Uh, beehives would definitely look a lot cooler in much bigger fields. That's for sure. But at the same time, you know, it's it, like it's serving a purpose here. This village again resource production that's its main purpose and this addition in here makes the farm more useful more useful faster and now we're also getting new resources out of it so really the biggest thing at this point is essentially I just need I just need flowers I need flowers to breed the bees and just keep increasing the amount of bees that are flying around in the fields. So I just got done going around and I've added a ton of flowers around the outside of basically the entire perimeter of the farm to kind of help spread out the directions that they're headed and just kind of hoping that they'll continue to fly around and go to each of the flowers around and then fly over the whole farm and basically just keep expanding production in the whole area. 
There's plenty of more work to do as far as getting more bees going in the farms, but that is going to be it for today. I look forward to seeing you next time in the Lapis Kingdom. Have a great day. Bye!